Hi, my name is Farrell Adams and this is Golang for Tourist. Welcome to section one, installation and setup. In this lecture, we're only gonna be talking about how to install the software that we need for the rest of this course. And in the second lecture, we'll look at the configuration and setup. I'll go through all the software you need and how to get it and how to install it. We need the Go tools because we're doing Go language programming, of course. We need a code editor to write code. And I'll be using Visual Studio Code Editor. I'll show you how to install and configure Visual Studio Code Editor. But if you are already competent with another code editor or some text editor that you would like to use, you do not have to switch. There are many editors out there, so feel free to use the one that align with your style of work. Optionally, you may install a version control staff software. Version control software allows you to manage the development and changes in your code. And I'll be using Git to manage the code that I develop, and you can get a copy of the code if you have Git installed. Don't worry, you can still get a copy of the code for this lecture. Even if you don't install Git, you can simply download it and I will show that too. Let's get to the installation. So the first thing we wanna install are the Go tools. That's the most important thing that we really need. You can get us at the download site by going to golang.org, which is the website for the Go programming language, and then going to download or clicking the download link. Once you get there, follow the installation instruction for your particular OS. For example, I am on a Mac, so I'll show you my installation process, but be aware that it might vary slightly for your particular in installation. One other tip, if you are not too comfortable making changes on your system, the best thing to do is to accept the defaults. So this is what it looked the installation process look like for me on a Mac. I have already navigated to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash golang.org forward slash download, but it doesn't matter if you just hit the golang website and then you can just click on download here. It takes you to the exact same page. Oh, here you have the download links for you know, Microsoft OS, Apple, and Linux, and then you have the source code. Remember I said Go is open source, so there's a source right there. You could download it, compile it if you like. If you have some more exotic hardware combination, well then you might want to scroll down to other ports and check those out. But either way, once you get the appropriate version, just click on it, have it download to your system, save the file, and then execute the installation of that file. So I already have it installed, so that's all they're mentioning that I have a previous installation, but let's go through it anyway. Now on my system, I have to give permission to install this, so I need an admin account, and I wait for the installation. If you're on Windows, it might ask you if you wanna add Go to your path, Again, do accept that because you'd like to be able to run the Go command from the command line. And if it's not in your path, you're not going to be able to do that. For Mac, I know it automatically does it. So we don't really need to be prompted for that. And it's asking me to remove it. That's up to you. But that is all that's required to install Go. So now that I have installed Go, I can verify that Go is installed by either going through, clicking on this link and going through to test your installation. And this basically walks you through creating a simple program and how to build it. The other thing you can do is just go to your terminal and you can type go and for example, env and enter. And you should see something like this. Or you can type, you know, just go alone and you'll see something like this. So this tells me that go is in my path and it's ready for use. Like I said, we need a code editor and I'll be using Visual Studio Code. I like it because I think it's simple and fairly easy to use. It has great support for Go programming and it's available um, here at this link or you can simply search for VS Code Download. Now, let me show you what the installation process for that looks like. Here I am on my Visual Studio Code download site and you can see the first thing they present you with is all the download options for the different operating system. I'm on the Mac, so I'll click this and it will offer me the opportunity to save it. One of the other things you can do is once you have Visual Studio installed, if this is the first time you're using it, I would suggest you click on introductory video 
and look at the first four videos and don't worry about actually installing any extension and notice these videos are at most five minutes long and so it's just to give you an idea of what it's like to use the editor and we're going to talk about which in um, extensions to install or plugins to install in the next lecture where we talk about configuration. So I don't actually want you to install anything, but I just want you to have an idea of how it works. But in terms of the installation though, let's go find our, our download file. And so here it is, it's a zip file. And for me, that means just simply expanding it. So I should be able to double click on that and that should expand. And then I'll drag and drop it into my applications directory. So if you're on Windows, it might mean putting it in some other directory or there might be an installation that puts it in a different place. But for me, this works. And so I can just say authenticate and I can put it in place. And that's all there is to install in Visual Studio Code. And now I can get rid of this downloaded file. So the other optional install is a version control tool. There are many other version control tools out there. I'll show you how to install Git. A version control tool is really to help you with code management and the evolution of your software. If you're going to be a software developer and you haven't been using any version control, I strongly recommend that you install one and at least get comfortable with it. Git is available for free download at git-scm.com. So https colon forward slash forward slash git-scm.com. Accept the default, but then when it asks you if you want to install the bash shell, you might want to do that just because you're going to see me run command from a shell that looks like a bash shell. And if you have a similar shell, it might just make it easier for you to follow up. Otherwise, you have to adopt those commands to run in your Windows command prompt. So let me show you what that process look like when I install it from my operating system. So as you can see, Git is free and open source, just like Go. And so you can click on the download link. If you scroll down here, you can see it detects my operating system type and it's offering me a download for Mac. But if you need to download on a specific version, you can just scroll down a little bit and get that from here. And so I click download and it's going to save it to my system. So if you like me and it didn't start downloading automatically, just click on this button and then it's going to go here. You're going to see this little timeout occurring. And then eventually it's going to pop up the save button. And so I save it to my system and there it is. Now I have notification that it's finished downloading. Now I can go to the download directory. There it is. And this is giving me a package to install and I can go through the process of the installation. Now for Mac, there's an issue there just now that you saw with it trying to install. When I do this, it's saying that though, basically it doesn't trust wherever I'm getting this from. So hold your hold down your alternate key, right click on package and then say open. And now when it open you get this other option where you can say open. And then now it's giving me the opportunity to authenticate and install it. And it's installed and that's it. So in the next lecture I'll go through how to get the code and how to set up your Visual Studio Code editor. So until then take care. See you in the next lecture. Bye.